the streets, roads, and dusty lanes of Colombia have been fertile ter territory for myths and legends since before the arrival of the Spaniards. Tales of La Batasala, the one-legged wailing banshee that forever sought her child, and El Dunde, a backwards-footed goblin that led travellers to their doom. Nibbled at the corners of a journeyman's ease for centuries. This story has mainly troubled those living in or passing through rural areas. The growth of the cities brought with it a new myth and legend. And a, a, a legend rooted in the primal distaste that we still ha ha harbour somewhere deep inside of modern technology. An example of this is the, than the Phantom Boss that allegedly roams the city's streets at night. Supposedly, young women who bought it are alone and are found mutilated in overgrown, outlit lying fields a few days later. A frozen look of abject terror illustrating the moment of their last tormented breath. That being said, and given that you're certainly not a young woman last time you checked, and that it's 5.30 on a Tuesday afternoon, phantom buses and handicapped gremlins are the last thing on your mind. You've been using the, p the, p the, um, the public transportation system for over two decades, and your greatest concern is that traffic levels have become all but unmanageable since the latest, the latest mayor took office. However, home is about 80 blocks away. <sighs> so your only choice is to wait until the right bus comes along. Walking would certainly take longer than putting up with any traffic jam. When the bus displaying the route sign you are looking for shows up, its advertised fare is 200 pesos lower than the standard going rate these days. It usually indicates that the vehicle in question is older and a bit more uncomfortable than most. But no bus rider in the history of the city has given a damn about that. Folks that consider themselves richer and above this mode of transportation pay seven times as much to get around by cab and expose themselves to a higher chance of being mugged or robbed. More power to them, right? Never want to avoid seeking further discounts. You are... You ask the wizened driver if he'll let you on for a thousand. The wrinkled, musty-looking man's eyes never leave the road as he slightly, silently takes your bill and slides it into the purse hanging from the bony gear stick. Satisfied, you, you turn your attention to the cabin. What would make this right idea would be an empty seat. Curiously enough, considering the time of the day, there aren't enough passengers aboard for any body to be standing. So you choose one to the left, towards the middle. Both, aisle, both the aisle and the window seat are free. You sigh contently as you spawn, sprawl out on one of your knees nested on the other. This particular, but this particular trip will be over in no time. The driver's radio off and your phone's battery died out, died an hour ago. So you pass the time staring out the window, and watching vendors ply their way, their ways past, and not along to whatever music they're enjoying. Your position eventually starts taking a toll on your back. You straighten up. <sighs> and take the chance to examine your fellow passengers. None of them seem to be riding together, given that everybody's quietly facing the front of the bus. But there also 
uncommonly old. Not in the sense that they're all over a hundred, but in the sense that nobody seems over seven. Um, nobody seems to be under seventy-five. He finds this a bit odd. For a brief moment, the idea that you don't belong here flashes through your mind. It's a silly thought, but combined with the 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 bus is particularly strong, although ne not necessarily smell of mass and metal. It makes you look forward to the end of the trip. Nevertheless, there are forty or forty, no, four, thirty to forty blocks to go. You look out the window again, zone out, and let your mind go where it wants to for a while. The sight of Pecos Bakery pulls you out of your re re revive. 20 minutes later. You get up and make your way past the silent companions to the rear exit where you hunt for the little silver button that will let the driver know that you've reached your stop. As you spot it above the door, you realise that nobody's boarded or left the vehicle since you got on, which is particularly weird for rush hour. Struggling it o shrug shrugging it off as a weird coincidence, you press down on the button and grab onto the... You're sitting on your seat, facing the front of the bus. What? What the hell just happened? You look around and see that everybody's still where they were a moment ago. Trying to make eye contact is fruitless, since they all seem to be lost wherever it is that old minds wonder. The thought of saying something goes through your mind, but you decide against it. What would you say anyway? You're probably so zoned out that you simply imagined getting up to ring the driver's bell. That's it. You're probably day you're probably daydreaming. <sighs> I mean your daydreams are now becoming so vivid that leading them is downright startling. Besides, you're already two blocks past your stop. Call it a weird thing that happened on the way home, or whatever. But now you should just get off the bus. There's no point not having to walk too far. You, once again, get off your seat and head for the rear exit. Somewhat unnerved by the other passengers' disinterest in everything around them. There's the button, right where you remember it. Except that you can't remember it. Of course, since you've never actually been back here, you probably saw it when you got on. After grabbing onto the guardrail, besides the seats. You look towards the, the... You look towards the driver. Put your thumb on the button. You're sitting on your seat facing the front of the bus. A piercing chill runs down your spine. Instead of fading away, it spreads through every one of your extremities. It's not a shift in body temperature. It's the chill you feel when suddenly consumed by the level of fear that slightly precedes terror. Something really messed up is going on here. You don't know what it is, but you want out. You don't want to be here anymore. A feeling of bitter solitude is now gnawing at your mind. Whatever these people around you are thinking, they clearly don't give a damn about what's going on with you. Therefore, you you once again decide to, to avoid saying anything and simply lift yourself off the seat. Not processing the, the fact that you did it with less agility than you should have been in the, in the first case. All you want now is to get rid of the bus. Besides, it's already advanced more than ten blocks past your street which suddenly feels like a tastefully long dis dis distance to walk. This is all secondary to the point. However, you have to get off this damn thing. As you make your way back, the old lady looks up at you. Her expression tells you nothing, but the way it fixes on you, on your torso, to be precise, as if you were just another chunk of the vehicle. Further spikes, almost overpowering sense of dread now, coursing through your veins. Whatever, you can't panic, 
Not now. You stand up at the back of the bus. Instead of going for the button, you yell at the driver. You yell at him to stop, to let you off. But you, that you've already d rung twice, but nothing comes of it. You curse at him, tell him what he'll die for, and w wish great evil upon his kids. But the door still remains unmoved. The man is not listening, or he doesn't care, or he doesn't want you to get off. But you don't give a damn what he wants. Or doesn't want. So you grab onto the bar, take a step back for momentum, and send a solid kick right into the column of hitches that you're sitting on your seat, facing the front of the bus. It takes a moment to register. Maybe more than a moment. Maybe it's a full minute. As it as you realize that the bus doesn't want you to leave, you also realize that your right knee hurts with an unnatural piercing sharpness. It's the same new leg you used against the door, and now it feels like it's all but broken. This quickly becomes a distant concern when you attempt to massage it though, because that's when you notice your hands. These are not the hands of a 25 year old. They are wrinkly, set with well-defined veins and even lightly patched liver spots. As you study your hands and arms, cold terror envelops every corner of your psychic. Your touch, you touch your face and feel the wrinkles and whiskers that didn't previously exist upon your cheekbones. Your head is patched with a few strands of hair as you, as your fingertip grasses your corpse scalp. A spark of electricity shoots through it and down into the most private recesses of your being. Your eyes dry up and open wide, unbelieving as you as a seven-ton lump of horror goes through your once paralyzed throat. You must leave this evil bus. You must leave it at once before it finishes what has begun. You carefully make your way off the seat. No need for further injury and head down towards the front of the driver. Perhaps you can raise it with him. Or perhaps you can club him to get death with a flashlight or something. Since there's always a variety of trinkets and gadgets in front of the you're sitting in your seat, facing the front of the bus. It takes a good five minutes to come to terms with what is happening to you. you. Understand that your life is flashing before your eyes, and now your hands are like those of your grandmother. Your your back hurts because from its base all the way to your neck. Your eyes can barely focus on a huge on the huge signs posted above the windows. If your mind isn't as sharp as it should be, it takes you a while to determine that you should make another attempt at the exit. Perhaps violence isn't the answer. Perhaps you can gently pull it open. Perhaps if you treat the bus like a living, gentle being, instead of treating it like a demonic s machine, it will let you out. Perhaps. The old woman is looking at you again. You notice her blue jacket, which is much too big for her. As if it was a blouse of the same size, it would hang loosely off her gaunt frame. A tiny, hesitant tear forms on her frail face. And then it follows a mendering path down the ancient features that land on her wrist with her eerie finality. There's two red liver spots on her cheeks you examine the door two panes joined by a vertical line of hinges coated on the right by a rubber pad to avoid contact damage the door is slightly bent inwards. As you notice this, a glimmer of hope runs through you. If you could just insert... You are sitting on your seat, facing the front of the bus.